Hello everyone and welcome to Soul Show. Today we are still doing our Spider-Man reviews. I watched every single Spider-Man film going in to No Way Home and now we are on the Mark Webb duo, the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. Today we're talking about Amazing Spider-Man 1, which came out in 2012 and it's a different Spider-Man this time around. I remember, you know, when this came out, it was only five years after Tobey Maguire's finale, so it really felt like, oh, this this should have been Spider-Man 4. Oh, we got a new one, new suit. Okay, we're doing things again. This came at a time when superhero films weren't so abundant. The idea of rebooting one, especially so soon, was a little, like, jarring. And people who didn't know who Gwen Stacy was over Mary Jane, like, it was it was a different time back then. You know, we've we've come a long way in just the past decade, and the fact that this Film is a decade old. Oh my god, I'm getting old. But anyway, The Amazing Spider-Man. I remember when I saw it, I enjoyed it, and then I completely forgot about it. I I had I have not seen this film, I think, in a decade, and I remembered it was, you know, pretty damn good. I also thought that about Amazing Spider-Man 2, though, which my opinion has changed drastically on that. But uh yeah, Amazing Spider-Man 1. Uh, has a has a couple good things going for it. There's some shots where it's first person and Spider-Man's flying around the city in first person. Those are beautiful. Gwen Stacy's Emma Stone, I think, is potentially the best part of both of these films. Her chemistry with uh, Peter is great. I think Gwen Stacy's father is like one of the also better things about this film because there's like big. Uh, big animosity between Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy's father and that only gets worse when like uh, we realize that you know Peter is Spider-Man and I'm going to go into spoilers for this I have a lot to talk about and if I have to dance around spoilers it's a decade old so I don't think anyone's going to be offended and also spoilers he gets bit by a radioactive spider but anyway, the villain for this film is the Lizard Man, and I think this is our worst Spider-Man villain, at least in film format, because think back to Spider-Man 3. Even the characters in that film, despite that they piss me off, as much as Venom feels like a waste, he still is interesting, he still has like motivation. The Lizard Man... Uh, on paper, yeah, yeah, fucking lizard man. Yeah, like we keep things a little more grounded with a just a li- a big lizard guy, you know, lizard people. That's fun memes, right? But by the end of the film, you don't care at all. His motivation is uh, the first like thirty minutes of this film are actually pretty textbook, pretty good, no complaints. Everything with uh, Ben Parker, I like. But like the more we go down the lizard man route, uh, at first it's like, okay, Dr. Connors. I know who Dr. Connors is. I've played Spider-Man games. I was already familiar with him. And then like, and then he's like, okay, I'm going to test on myself. And then I start becoming a lizard. And then it's like, oh, this is the... He suddenly goes from, we're going to maybe do some human trials to, I want the entire city to be lizards. I want the next stage of evolution. We're all going to be lizard people. And I know, you know, he mutated. His brain is fucked. He's a bad guy now. But you, I was really expecting more of like a Hulk type character who like really is battling with his demons. You know, Green Goblin shit. That's, that's what I like. I don't like some guy who becomes a lizard and then he's just off the deep end and it's like, take him out. Uh, and by the end of the film, like when I'm going into No Way Home, I had just watched this film and I could not remember what happened to Lizard Man. I was like, did he die? Did he get sent in jail? And I just watched the film. So, yes, considering the first time I forgot it entirely, this film is fairly forgettable. All you remember is the stuff with Emma Stone and Peter Parker uh, and some fun shots and Spider-Man. Spider-Man in this film I think Andrew Garfield isn't a bad Peter Parker. I know some people shit on his performance. He looks like like he's almost been he's, he looks like buzzed, like he's been drinking a little bit during some of the scenes cuz he he's supposed to be like this kind of like sleepy, I'm in the back of the room with my head down kind of student, you know. He's not he's not your geeky 
Peter Parker is like, oh, I'm in the science. It's like, oh, I'm a smart slacker kid and I skate through the halls. Uh, but I still end up dating really hot chicks. Uh, he's one of those kind of kids. But as punchable as he is in a couple scenes and as much as he's like creeping on Gwen Stacy, he's like being a dick to the boys. Just, a, not, just not even like a retaliation. He's just being a dick to the boys. There are parts of that that I like, though. He actually feels like a character. I know some people think he's not a fully realized person, but like I, I get what they were going for. And then when he becomes Spider-Man, he gets those quips in that we were waiting for for so long. Uh, I know that they're short lived, but he actually like when he's Spider-Man feels like Spider-Man and the suit. I have mixed feelings about the suit. I think it's like the worst uh, on screen suit that we've seen. But, you know, now that we have an abundance of Spider-Man's now, I, 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 I'll accept it. I don't think it's that bad of a suit. And this was the first time we saw web swingers on screen. The web shooters, I should say. And that was a new thing at the time. And I, I was, you know, trying to grasp these thoughts, the actual lore canon uh, of having web shooters. That was a new thing for me at the time. Also, Aunt May and Uncle Ben. I really like Uncle Ben in this film. I love Uncle Ben in this film, in fact, because he felt like he was such a real grandpa. Because there are moments where he's like a cool, lax grandpa, like, oh, you got in a fight at school today? What happened to the other guy? And then, like, it's like, you didn't pick up your Aunt May? You didn't pick up Aunt May? You didn't give her a drive home? She walked home by herself, you dumb mother... I love, like, the contrast in that. And, like, yeah, there's... Spoiler alert, the moment he dies, it felt that, like they were kind of speedrunning those scenes a little bit, and then he tries to hunt down the guy who got him, and they don't even finish that arc. That's a little weird. But, the, but Uncle Ben himself, I really like. And Aunt May... They overuse the the idea of like him coming home and Aunt May's like, why are you all beat up? And he's like, I don't know. And she's like, why are you all dirty? I, w I was cleaning the chimney. We don't have a chimney. What? That's what I'm talking about. There are moments where Peter's actually really funny. And the, the first time it happened where Aunt May is like, oh my God, why are you all beat up? Like you really feel for her. I think. There is some really good stuff in there. It's just some of the stylistic choices and some of the really bad writing. Like, oh, they immediately find the serum for creating uh, lizard people. Or the lizard man finds his camera and it just says property of Peter Parker on it. Or the whole movie, uh, Spider-Man's trying to find out about his parents, which is, that's an actually interesting arc. You know, it's not really resolved in this one. It's never really resolved, which kind of makes it feel pointless in the end. But like Peter just walks up to this computer and it just he just presses play. And then it's the lizard man talking to himself, just waiting to give exposition. And Peter keeps using fucking Bing. No one uses Bing. Why is smart science kid using Bing? Why are there Bing montages in a Spider-Man film to begin with? let alone multiple Bing montages. They also talk about Norman Osborn throughout the film, and you never see him. That's completely pointless. Also, the resolution of this film, where Peter makes a promise to Gwen Stacy's dad, and then we have this like emotional scene where Gwen's crying, and then like two scenes later, he's like, by the way, I might break my promise. It's like, well shit that just felt a little bit pointless then maybe if we established that and then like what did that over time but no they just speed run it this film pacing the epilogue the writing and some of the stylistic choices because this was coming around the time when like dark knight was really big and for whatever reason some of the scenes are just like really dark for no reason even this picture right here i would never associate spider-man with this color palette and this like dark shit that they got going on this looks like some dark knight shit but bad and some of the scenes in this film and some of the scenes in this film and there's a scene in this film where i'm talking about where spider-man is just doing all these quips and he's like oh no knives my weak the scene where he's like oh no knives my weakness uh that's a great scene but it looks so dark it's a funny scene. Why does it look like that? So yeah, I think if The Dark Knight didn't come out, then this film would look completely different. So between some of the stylistic choices, the bad writing, goofy moments, 
some questionable acting spots here and there. The film kind of feels like a mess, but within that mess, you actually have a lot of really good moments. And there's certain things that some people are going to hate and some people are going to like. A lot of that stuff I actually did like. It's just bogged down by a lot of stupid stuff. This could have been an amazing Spider-Man film, but it really just got weighed down with a lot of bullshit. And despite it all, I still enjoy the film. I don't think it's as good as Spider-Man 1 or 2, but it's better than Spider-Man 3. I'm going to give The Amazing Spider-Man a 7 out of 10. It's not like a strong 7 or anything, but I would watch it again over Spider-Man 3. I do like Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man, even though a lot of people don't. I like Gwen Stacy. I like a lot of what they do here, and I'll let you know if they can continue the, the wonderful work in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. And with that, I leave you.